Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to yet another episode of Israel in Style. I'm Emmanuel Kadosh, and well, if you don't know this already, I'm here to give you all the latest updates on Israeli fashion, culture, and of course, and lifestyle. So let's dive straight into the show. My first guest with me in the studio is a woman who seems to have done it all. She's a Shankal fashion design graduate. She has over 20 years of experience in the fashion world. She's a presenter for ML, and she also is a self-image and lecturer, self-image coach and lecturer, but I'll let her tell you all about it. Marina Golovich, how are you? I'm great, and you? I'm great. So why don't you tell for the viewers who don't know how you really did get involved in the fashion world? Oh, I just drew princesses <laughs> when I was five, and it was very, very clear that I'm going to go for fashion. It started like that. You were yeah, just like, yeah, for sure. I was a little girl, for and sure. I could do this. Right, <laughs> yeah. And the princesses were with tiny waist, of course, and then I realized that it made me feel bad about myself because right. I was a round child, you know, I was thin. Right. And then um, fashion industry actually um, was great, but it made me feel really bad my, about myself because models are obviously really thin and really right. tall and then I was like something is wrong with me obviously. well it's funny that you said obviously when you were saying um, yeah I drew the princesses with obviously a small waist because well, it look sounds about, obvious yeah, think about all the fairy tales right. that we are yeah all the princesses are, are really thin right, that's right. the reality of it they you have know? the hourglass shape that they like they stereotype yeah. us to Cinderella. want to look like right exactly yeah um, so from that clearly uh, came the self-coaching or how did the self-love, self-image, how did that come about? Oh, that's a funny story. When I was a designer, I actually had this access to data about sales. And right. then I noticed that the most, you know, selling uh, sizes are 12 and 14. And then I was like, oh, I am the average woman. Right. Not the model. No. And then it started to like kind of, you know, be inside me, this, this pride about my body Definitely. and then that led me to confidence overall and then I felt this is my mission I should teach people how to feel better about themselves and how to love themselves through their body image right because when you you were saying you had access to all this data to all this information about how what sizes people were buying and they weren't buying and real people real people they're not buying the double zero they're no. buying more of the 12 the 14 here in this yeah. in Israel those are the yeah. sizes so how did that how did that happen though you were saying you originally started uh, personal styling after Shankal right no 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 I was first a designer and okay. then I went to personal styling right. and then well I felt that the personal styling doesn't really work un unless you kind of approach the whole thing you know if you teach someone to love their body then it's easier to choose the right outfit not the you know not the other way around definitely That's and I'm think. sure that a lot of people you know they take note when their stylists are telling them something you know they're they're appreciative of the advice that they're getting so I'm sure that when the girls are standing there about to go model these clothes that maybe they don't feel the best in or they don't feel a hundred percent you're there to kind of be like listen this is like teaching them a little bit more of self-love and so how did that come about for you how where did that confidence come from well, um, I guess that the confidence came from step-by-step um, step building this um, thing about my uniqueness, dropping the comparison. This is the best advice I can give anybody, drop the comparison. Because all of us have this kind of um, blueprint ideal from our childhood. Of course. It's not even ours. Yeah, yeah. And then we compare ourselves to this. You look at yourself in the mirror and, you, and then somebody is standing literally in front of you and then you don't see yourself, you just see the difference. So drop that and then dis ju just destroy it and then build a new one, which is based on your uniqueness. We are not supposed to be similar, we're supposed to be different. Right, and it's, it's funny that you say that because you said that you started out as being, you are now the presenter for Matimli, yeah, which I'm is a model. A, I'm a model. You're a model, I'm but a you model. started out uh, designing for yeah. them, right? So why don't you tell us how it went from designing to modeling? So funny. They, I just started to, you know, uh, putting some videos on Facebook and everything about the body image, and they just approached me. They just called me and they said, "Would you like to be our presenter?" And like, they're like, "You remember oh, us? Yeah. You used to design for us. Now we want you to be yeah, our presenter." Yeah, it was so funny. It was like a closure for me, you know, when right. I was, I, I suddenly I felt like I'm a model, so that means something about me. So it just affected the whole, my my confidence overall, and then affected, you know, other self images my self images about myself not even not even the body thing. right and even, just for you just generally personally. yeah and so you're saying that helped you personally what about the videos that you make and the lectures that you do tell us a little bit about that you know I just let people um, 
kind of understand the different approach to your body right. and to yourself and how to feel about yourself. Everything we do is actually um, is as good as we feel about ourselves. That's it. Our right. self-image is the one that leads us to our success. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's your body or if it's your, I don't know, emotion or your ability. It's all about how you feel about yourself. And that could be built just upon feeling that you're different and unique and then going from there. 100%, because you were telling me earlier before that you always got the comments that, oh, you're so pretty, but, you're, but there's always the but, yeah, you know? Yeah, and that's like yeah. the feeling where, you're like, why, where, why is there a but? Like, that's the feeling that I'm not enough. Right. And I'm not enough is the worst feeling you can, you know, have about anything. I think a lot of girls feel like that right now, you know? Well, maybe a little bit less right now in the time period that we are at, but even just like a few years ago, you know, people were really judgmental and very harsh about what they look like and the pictures and yeah. the makeup. And, you know, there's so many tools that they have to be doing that. So really quickly, what are, what are some advice, key advice, uh, things that you share on your videos? Well, first of all, just like I already mentioned, yeah. drop the comparison. Just look at yourself as you are and take that and then build something from it. That's the first. Um, and then I think about the body image, know your body type. That's yeah. the most important. If I would design right now, yeah. it is. But, you know, there are tons of information on the, you know, online and just look it up. It's hard about being aware. You're saying know your body type. Yeah. There's knowing your body type and accepting your body type. Oh, you know, acceptance that's is the key to everything. Yeah. Acceptance is the key to everything. Just remember that you were born perfect. Yeah. And that you chose, you know, I kind of believe that we choose to be how we are. You don't need to try to be somebody else. Right. I'm not saying you should be obese. Right. That's not the thing. Like, don't eat all the McDonald's yeah, that yeah. you think you can uh, eat. You know, I, I'm perfect. Balance. Like, yeah, yeah, balance. Just go, go there. And then um, from that place of knowing your body type, accepting it, that's the way. Right. Just, you 100%. know. 100%. Yeah. Amazing. So people can check you out on YouTube. They can check you out on your page, on your website, right? Yeah. And also at ML site. Yes. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being thank with us. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. All right, well, if you want to keep updated with Marina, make sure to check out her YouTube videos and, of course, her website for all the self-love tips to make you feel just as special as you are. Next up on the show is another personal favorite of mine because she's the perfect mix between classy businesswoman and downright crazy fashionista. She's not afraid of taking risks, yet somehow her risks are always on trend. So here to talk fashion trends for this spring slash summer season is the one and only Rachel Zoar. Hello. Hi, love. Hi. I'm so glad that you're back here on the show Thank talking you. about trends. You are the fashionista of Tel Aviv right now. So why don't you tell us what trends we can be expecting for the spring summer season? Okay. We can see that all the fashion designers and all the big stores are bringing the big, big sleeves. Okay. And all the crazy sleeves to the clothes. Uh, since uh, the Renaissance uh, period of time, right. the Louis XIV, the 14th, century we can see all the falling sleeves the buff puffed sleeves and uh, the um, low the cuts yeah. of the shoulder sleeves we can see all this trend coming back again now I feel 2018. Like that's constantly happening right with the high-waisted jeans and like you know the converse the chokers everything is coming back going back right yeah. so these are crazy trends like how how are people you know are people accepting these trends how is it working here in Israel we can see that uh, the main stores like the big uh, fashion stores like Zara and H&M right. making like a very simple shorts with puffed sleeves, right. very big sleeves, with uh, pearls, with gold, with many things. Ruffles, with ruffles, like lace, a lot of that. Yeah, with sequences and everything. So we can see it coming in every place. Also, we can see all the customates, the hot couture, my clients asking me all the time, make for me big sleeves, right. standing, falling, lots of fa uh, 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 fabric. Right. One cut sleeves. It's also a very, uh, uh, a very uh, sleeves are sleeve. really in right now. Yeah, whether yeah. it's off the shoulder, whether it's really big. You know, I actually have a shirt similar to this, and I still haven't figured out how to wear these things. Israel, uh, in specific, uh, the girls here are very trendy. One hundred percent. You can go to Italy. You can go to France. You can go to uh, New uh, York. USA. Yeah. yeah. Israeli girls are very fashionable. All over the world, you won't see as fashionable uh, girls like in Israel. Right. I feel like they're really up to date with what the trends are. They're even a little bit early on the trends. Sometimes they're not they, afraid. Definitely. They're, they're not, not afraid, afraid to take these risks. So 
Speaking of trends, what about colors? What can we talk about colors? What can we expect for this um, okay. season? Before the colors, I want right. to say something. The big sleeves don't, uh, uh, we cannot see that it's matching for everyone. I was just going to ask you that. Is there a certain body type yeah. or a yeah, certain, it's yeah. very important. This is why I wanted to, to stop and to talk right. about it. Because not every girl, not every shape of body can uh, use this kind of sleeves. Okay. You need to be long tall right to have these long sleeves because it might make you look and we're not trying to discriminate against you short girls no, here no, no, because no. that's not the case but what we are trying to say is that there's certain looks you know just like marina was here before she says know your body know your body type and like certain things make certain girls maybe look a little uh smaller or you know it kind of takes over their it body ma it makes them look smaller than they are right uh, you need to have a length to use it. Also, you can have a length and you cannot be very slim, but if you have a very wide shoulders, okay. don't bring the bigger uh, sleeves and the puffed sleeves. You can make like the low Off cut the sleeves shoulder. or okay. one, one side sleeve. Okay. It's better for big uh, uh, wide uh, shoulders girls. Right. And uh, as I told, the short ones, don't put the long too big because it will make you smaller and shorter. Right. Now. I mean, this is extreme. This is actually beautiful. But I love this this look. Yeah, it's amazing. Also, I want to say something. You need to be very uh, smart where you go with it. Okay. If you intend to go to a place that you're going to eat, yeah. <laughs> it's not a very good idea. To this is from to personal run. experience, yeah, clearly. Yeah. I, had, I had a very big shirt and then I just took something from a table and all my shirt was in the soup. Oh, God. In all the, uh, and I'm sure it was white and the soup was red. Like, obviously, our yeah. luck. Like, why wouldn't it be? So go with it to places you you're not supposed to eat or you eat small with yeah. your finger, uh, finger or just be like a little bird and eat like yeah, that yeah yeah so you need to be smart where you go with it and to use it right uh, right you can see also the trend came from the 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 crazy people right uh, right uh, right cotton <laughs> and uh, from the louis uh, 14 and the renaissance the, gay, the geisha yeah. women were using all the big sleeves and uh, Dracula, yeah. we are going back again. We're taking it real yeah, back. Yeah, all the witches had hide were hiding things inside the sleeves. This is beautiful. So we yes. can see everything is coming back to us. Okay, so really quickly before we have to wrap up, what colors can we be expecting? Okay, so one of the colors is one of what I'm wearing now. It's like the camel orange. I love this uh, color. The safari. Would look. you consider this uh, pastel though? No, it's not okay. a pastel. It's like a ground, uh, a ground. Okay, like uh, a na like a nature look, like yeah. a nature color. Okay. This is one of the looks. Uh, the other looks is like all the pinks of the uh, fuchsia. Okay. Uh, the bubblegum uh, pink. Wow. We're gonna your see. favorite. Yeah, yeah, I love the pink. Next time I'm gonna yes, wear something like that. And we can see all the pastels. All of them. All right. I'm gonna be very strong. Like this baby year. blue, like a little bit of like mint green, stuff like that. Aqua, yes. yellow, very light yellow and very light pink. Uh, all those uh, uh, purple, very light purple. Amazing. You, you can see it, uh, the bridesmaids ask all all over. They're right. asking for those colors. They want to be. In they're all over the. We're, they're over letting the bride choose. Yeah, now yeah. we're choosing what's on trend and their pastels, and that's what we want as bridesmaids. Yeah. Okay, so we can look forward to seeing you talking about other fashion trends, other fashion topics in future episodes of Israel and Style. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you. Okay, well, if you're in the area and you're looking for the top personal stylist in Tel Aviv, this is the woman you want to reach. Or if you're looking for one of a kind Rachel Zohar design, check out her Instagram for more. So one of my favorite parts of hosting Israel in Style is that I'm constantly getting recommendations for talented people to come onto the show. But then there are times that I'm walking around Tel Aviv and get drawn to amazing artists and designers. And that's exactly how I met my next guest, macrame designer Ilana Matatov. Did I say that last yes, name right? Like Akuna right. Matata you were telling yeah. me. That's how we got into the vibe. So yeah. Ilana, tell me, how did you get involved in this specific type of design? Okay, so it's... It's interesting because I'm a cinema student. Okay. And I'm a blogger and a photographer and a writer myself. And I've been in a very bad period in my life because I broke up with my boyfriend. Okay. And I just uh, I just couldn't do the computers anymore. I couldn't be around the screen and you know the phone, everything. So I just needed to do something with my hands. Something that's going to make me stop thinking. Right. So um, 
I got a plant hanger about two years ago. It was a macrame plant hanger. I didn't even know it's called the macrame. You got it because it looked cute. It and looked <laughs> cute, and I got it for 120 shekel. <laughs> and I just said to myself, why, why shouldn't just I do one for myself for right, home? Right, right, right. So I started doing the knots and weaving, and right now I'm doing everything about macrame. So what is macrame for those who don't know? So macrame is a way of actually weaving. It's a fabric art, and it started uh, in the 13th century. Okay. And it started with the sailors. They were in the off hours when they had nothing to do. They just start decorating, uh, decorating the boats, decorating, um, you know, the pots, right. everything. And when they got to the to the land, they sell them, and they did barter. And this is is also something that started in Africa, and because the sailors started with this, they brought it to Spain. Right. From Spain, they got it to England, and then they got it to America, and it's something that is existing already for a thousand years and it was a big big trend in the 80s so what materials do you use when you're making this i use different materials because i live on allenby right by the shuk for those who don't know that's a really big street here in yes. israel in tel aviv specifically okay so um they have a lot of uh, hollanders and a lot of uh, fabric stores right. materials so I'm just being, like, I've been walking around those stores all the time when I come back from school, when I go to see a friend, and I just needed to buy something. Yeah. So I just started buying uh, tricot yarn. I'm going to construction stores, and I'm getting ropes. Right. And I'm just, like, you know, I'm feeling the fabric because I'm doing it from my heart because the, the, the piece I'm making is something that I know I'm going to wear. Definitely. And I'm wearing it. Well, why you actually have a bunch of material here yeah. on the table. Why don't we just dive into doing a little do-it-yourself to teach us how you make these keychains. Okay, so it's quite simple, okay? We're going to do a keychain like that. Okay. Um, we're going to uh, cut the strips to be in even size. Okay. How many strips are you cutting right now? Um, because we're doing something small, right. I'm going to use four strips. Okay. And we're using a very simple yarn that I got from Max Stock and it's not something that could be very expensive. So you could get this type of uh, yarn in any, you know, any arts and crafts store. Any construction store, <laughs> anything. All right, so you cut four identical strips of this. Yes, and then we are putting it inside the keychain. Keychain thing, the, yeah. the part that holds your keys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we are doing it like that. So we are folding it in a half. Okay putting it inside and the thing that we do is that we are pulling both sides back in so yes. you're making a knot so that they stay even yes okay they have to be even but you know I think I, try. I think the macrame is uh, the geometry of fabric because basically what you're doing is you are putting two fabrics together Yes. And it's being very geometric. It's like very pretty. Ah, I did it, guys. Okay, and then we are doing uh, the one last, more. The last one. Okay. Like trying to listen and trying to focus at the same yes. time. And then we are doing the square knot. The square knot is the base for the macrame. Okay. Okay. We are taking uh, two knots that we made. We are holding them like uh, we are using four strips okay we are taking the right one and we are putting the left one kind of make like a four it. yeah and this is how it makes a square knot okay so let's see one more time you do um, you make a four like this here's yes. the shape of the four and then you put the other string on the other side we are doing it on, over over and in and in oh and all of this we can find on on YouTube, yeah. Instagram, everywhere you want, there is a lot of DIY. Yeah. There's a lot of tutorials that can teach you. This is how I taught myself because I believe that we are living in a world that everything is so easy and fast. So we can do whatever we want. Definitely. And so these kinds of techniques you can learn on YouTube and then 
when you're you're making all different types, how does a piece like this, how long does a piece like this generally take you to make? Like a keychain? Yeah, let's say a keychain. Um, it can take maybe for 15 minutes, oh, 30 minutes. Oh, really quick. It depends on how, how fast you're doing it, how fast you're knowing uh, the knot. Right. Like, and so this is just one knot out of many knots that you can be making, right? Yes, this is, is the base. Okay. And this is how you started. This is how I started with these knots. Okay. But right now I know a few more knots. And right. And then that's how you make the more intricate, yes, let's say, pieces. This is how you make it more interesting, more, um, you know, more heavy. Right. Amazing. So why don't we finish this? And then, so tell us where we can find you. You have your Instagram account. Yes. You have your Instagram account that people can find you on. Yes. And they can direct message you if they like the pieces that you're offering and you sell them internationally or are you yes. just here in Israel? I'm selling it internationally and in Israel. Amazing. And I'm also doing uh, things like um, when you order special right. orders. Right, okay, custom made. Custom made. Great. And I'm designing weddings. Yes. And um, my name on Instagram is the girl from Tel Aviv. Because you are the girl from Tel Aviv. I am the girl from Tel Aviv. <laughs> Amazing. And you can check out my blog, so you can buy the things on the blog. Great. And read my adventures in Tel Aviv. Amazing. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us, Alana. Thank you for teaching us how to make the basic design. And I'm sure we'll have you back on the show to teach us a few more knots. I hope so, too. So thank you. Thank you. Make sure to check out Alana's Instagram account, the girl from Tel Aviv, to see all of her different designs and get in touch with her if you fell in love with any of them and why to buy. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's episode of Israel in Style. Thank you to all the guests who came into the studio today. And for all you viewers who want to keep updated with the show, check us out on ILTV.tv slash Israel in Style. Have a fabulous week, everyone.